Hi, this is Eric White. This is the third in a series of screencasts on adding and updating tables of contents in OpenXML word processing ML documents. In the first screencast, I walked through the markup of a table of contents. In the second screencast, I walked through a little bit of code that can take a document without a table of contents and insert that table of contents at any particular point. You can also use that code to insert a table of figures. In the first and second screencasts, we saw how if you set the update fields element to true in the settings part, then when you open that document in Word, Word puts up a modal dialog box telling you that the document contains fields that may refer to other files. Do you want to update fields in the document? And you have to click yes in order to have your table of contents updated. In this screencast, I'm going to show how you can use Word automation to get around that problem. If you're writing a document generation solution, this is one of the ways in which you can avoid having that dialog box come up for your users. In the blog post on OpenXML Developer that introduces this video, there is an attachment that contains all the code that I've talked about in this video. And in addition, there's a Visual Studio 2010 project that you can use to build the example. To make it as easy as possible for you to get going, though, I'm going to walk through the steps of building the Visual Studio project. Start Visual Studio 2010. Create a new project. I'm creating a Windows console application. I'm using the .NET Framework 3.5, but you can use 4.0 just as easily. I'm specifying the name of the project as TOC Adder. Click OK. We need to add references to the OpenXML SDK. Document format.openxml uses a class in Windows Base, so we need to add Windows Base. Next, we need to add a reference to the Office 12 primary interop assemblies. You'll find these under the .NET tab. I find it convenient to sort by component name. And we're looking for microsoft.office.interop.word. When you install Office 2010, it installs two versions of the primary interop assemblies. There is version 12 and there is version 14. We are not using anything that requires 14 so we may as well use 12. This means that your program will run equally as well on a computer that has Office 2007 installed and a computer that has Office 2010 installed. I'm going to go grab the source files out of the directory that you get when you download the zip file that is the attachment. I need this TOC adder example too. I also need to go into TOC adder and I need to grab ptopenxmlutil.cs, ptutil.cs, and TOC adder.cs. And the example is going to expect that these five test documents exist in the same directory as the solution. I'll copy and paste those into that directory. Back in Visual Studio, I'll remove program.cs and I'll add new existing items. I'll add all four of these source modules. Looking at the main function, it's pretty similar to the main function for the example that I walked through in the second screencast in this series. However, one thing that 
this example does differently is it creates a list of files to process each time that it takes a document and it inserts a table of contents into that document it adds the file name to the files to process list and at the end it calls this method process files using word automation here's the method to process files using word automation it's pretty straightforward word automation programming it creates a new application it sets the word application to be invisible and then it iterates through all the file names in that list of file names puts together a new file name that the test document will be saved under it then copies the original to the new name opens it and saves it let's run the example it's finished I'll navigate to the bin debug directory and here we can see test01 has update fields in the settings part set to true so if we double click on it we will get this modal dialog box test01 dash converted using word automation no longer has the update fields element in the settings part the table of contents is updated and it won't put up that modal dialog box. We can look through all of these test documents and we can see that they are all processed properly. Here's the test document that had a table of figures inserted into it. That's all I'm going to cover in this screencast. In the next screencast, I'm going to walk through using Word Automation Services to update the table of contents.